Get more out of your adventures with more from the Gnome Depot. With ways to save on every item you want, you can do more with your lofty ambitions and even invent some new ones. With King's Road savings that help you do even more, we can all make this season one to remember. The Gnome Depot, how challengers have more fun. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of King's Road, Young Lions. I'm your DM, Saucy, and I'm here with the Young Lions. Say hello, Young Lions. Hello, hello Young, young lions. lions. Hello, Young Lions. Tonight is a very special episode because this is going to be our first charity stream. Tonight we have a very special charity in mind, and for every view we get on the video, we're going to make a donation towards that charity. Uh, this is a charity that is near and dear to one of our players, so we wanted to be supportive of their project. So Saris, uh, the handler of Rosa, is behind this special charity. And Saris, I'd like you to do an introduction. Tell us a little bit about the charity and what it means to you. Oh, yeah. So uh, the charity is called The Whole Person. It serves the Kansas City area, um, which is kind of the area that I'm from on both Kansas and Missouri side. Um, basically, The Whole Person, they uh, connect people with disabilities to resources um, to support, you know, independent living and all that. Also, uh, connecting with the community as well, um, with support groups and outreach and, you know, teaching people. Uh, but the whole person came up this year because, uh, this past weekend we had our local con, uh, Planet Comic Con Kansas City. And, uh, every year, uh, our group, we have a booth there, um, we select a charity every year to donate anything that we get donation wise, especially from our blast a trooper booth, which is where you take a nerf gun and, you know, kind of shoot at a stormtrooper or something like that. Um, and this year the whole person was selected. Um, and this past weekend we managed, they came out with the numbers. We managed to raise a little over $3,000, uh, to the whole person. And when I was, uh, telling, saucy about this he you know offered to do a special episode you know kind of highlighting this charity and i'm really excited about it it's um we've actually worked with them before and it was always a great experience and i am really excited about this yeah me too and uh for anybody who's listening on Twitch or watching the video on YouTube. Thank you for watching the stream. Um, I don't know if you're watching because you heard about the charity donation or if you were a repeat viewer, but we appreciate the traffic nonetheless. Uh, and I want to make sure that we are doing what we can to try to do something positive with the stream. So all the links will be in the description of the video when it goes up on YouTube. If you have the means, Please consider donating. It's uh, it's a four star charity. It's uh, they have a great reputation and it's a good cause. So, um, once again, the name of the charity, the whole person out of Kansas City. So, with that said, now let's do a little recap of where we left off last time, and that brought us to the city of Colville, better known as the Holler by the locals. It's the second gym town that, that the young lions have been to. It's a gym, it's a town that's known for its moonshine, its slap fighting, and its culture. Let's, let's put it that way. They are on the fringes of the kingdom and they have their own way of doing things. So the party rolls into town. They go right to the brothel as one does, uh, but not because uh, they have any vices to satisfy, but because they have a party affiliation and, and a sponsorship deal with the Risky Rabbit. Although I called it the Velvet Rabbit a couple times last week. The Risky Rabbit is the name inspired by a Twitter account called The Velvet Rabbit, which if you're into role-playing, 
brothels is is a rabbit hole you can go down on your own but great people over oh. there <laughs> very uh very creative role playing going on and any kind of role playing is good role playing in in my head so um we adopted their business model into our game and that's the risky rabbit well in this particular town the risky rabbit has a competitor right across the street called the moon door a business that does not open its doors until the moon comes out and where we left off at the last episode is the sun has just set the moon has just came up in the center of town an obelisk at an area called the five points and there are five businesses that are open the risky rabbit the moon door the botch goblin tavern the lady of the mountain temple and the gnome depot the general item and magic store the party spent some time in the botch goblin they met some colorful characters bronson got to meet some long lost cousins gator made a love connection and uh and then that brings us to solomon who runs into our cheery friend here on on your screen if you're watching on youtube you can see the uh it just looks like a nice guy this is roscoe the gnome an employee of the gnome depot recognizes solomon right away they come up they do the traditional gnome greeting of rubbing noses together and all is right in the world party did it did we summarize that correctly did we leave anything out i think that sounds right I definitely okay. didn't get pickpocketed by Solomon, my own party mate, and then proceed to fail at a uh, seduction check, which may or may not have actually been the case. But uh, yeah, he took my money and I couldn't buy a drink, so now I have a sugar mama. So he took your money so that she couldn't take it. Is, is that accurate? Uh-huh. That That's the reason, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it worked out hilariously. Great. Please tell me that, that Roscoe's last name is Lowe's. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we don't know. Solomon, what's Roscoe's last name? Oh, no. We put him on the spot. He's still on mute. <laughs> I'll do my impression. Hi, there we know. go. That'll fix that. <laughs> okay. Now, I'd known Roscoe a very long time. Before he even worked at the Gnome Depot, he was just a moonshiner up in the hills. And, you know, I... I don't think he's got a last name or uh, something. Uh, like it's, it's weird. Uh, he's just Roscoe. Everybody knows Roscoe. It's like Roscoe Cher. Harbor Freight. It's like it's Roscoe yeah. IKEA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Mr. Roscoe is very happy to see you, Solomon. Uh, and you'll have to forgive me. I forgot the voice that I was using for Roscoe last week, but this is how uh, I remember in my head. Like, it oh, it was basically, it was saucy doing a Solomon impression. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's it. That's it. So there's Roscoe. <laughs> hey, Solomon. Hey, you should come on in. Look at the stock we got here in the home Depot, the gnome Depot. Uh, I've got some yeah. great items for you. Oh, that's so great. Thank you so much. Uh, it's so good to see you. Yeah, I'd love to see what you had. You know, we just stole the ship. So uh, I might want to pick out a few nice things. Well, you're in luck. We have some great new items here in the Gnome Depot. Uh, you're going to get a private viewing. We'll take you, take you in the back here. Uh, are all of you going to come? How many of you are planning on coming in here? Gator steps forward. I will certainly be interested. Oh, hey, some of you guys followed me. I thought uh, I thought you were sleeping, Gator. Listen, I'm fine. <laughs> There's magic to be had. There's yeah, magic we to be were, had. Who can sleep? We were strategizing what we were going to tackle first, whether or not we were going to go to the mountains for the trial or the... Uh, or to deal with the bandits, but since it's nightfall, it's probably a good idea to maybe just wait until the morning to handle all this business. So we could we could probably all be there. Yeah, I'll invite anybody who wanted to come over to the Gnome Depot. I mean, it might spoil some of the surprise, I guess. But <laughs> come on. How Bye. does 
How does Zinthral feel about that? Are you on board? Dude, he's still trying to fly. He doesn't know what's going on. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, so he's just a lost puppy that will follow anybody home. Okay. Yeah, he's just, well, he's, he's just, you know, well, start yeah. throwing a bird seat at him. <laughs> Shortly, I make a handle animal check. Zandro! <laughs> uh, no. What's that? Okay, are you guys ready for this? Do you, do you want to see the, uh, I made a catalog for Ooh. the Gnome Depot of nine wonderful rare items. Ooh. And they are described in a way that only Roscoe can describe them. He's very excited to show you. He tells you that his boss, Stern, put this together. And uh, Stern's not around right now, but he'll be be happy to uh, tell Stern that you came by. And if I did this correctly, it'll look beautiful. And if you, if you follow the account on Twitter, by the way, we've been posting some great items at the Gnome Depot. All of these items will appear there pretty soon as well. Are we about to get the... Yeah, we're going to get the newspaper insert. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the weekly. So here we go. The, the Gnome Depot, our tagline is, your business is none of our business. Hey, <laughs> with uh, the body lotion. <laughs> what is that? The kablammy. So, if Roscoe can give you a little uh, presentation here of our inventory, we'll just start right from the top. Behind door number one, we have a lovely ring box. When you open it, it summons a wrestling ring. It sounds like it's right up your alley, guys. You look like a, especially the big green one there, he looks like he knows his way around a wrestling ring. Speaking of oh, green, it summons a, a wrist ring. I for a second there, I was like, Roscoe, a wrestling ring. What is that? But you know, you mean a ring to fight in. That's right. That that's right. It's a it's a. Well, it's either a twelve by twelve or fifteen by fifteen. I don't know if it's metric or English standard units, but it's a big ass ring. You would love it. It's worth the Dang price. It. Just look on the bottom. If it says indie, it's probably 12 by 12. (laughs) (laughs) So speaking of green, we've got a big green bag here that holds a big ass magic snake that destroys things. You put the things in the bag, the the snake destroys it. And uh, then this this snake may or may not disappear from the bag. He has he has a habit of escaping, but he's he's friendly. He's great. He's good with kids. He's wonderful. His name is Damien. You would love him. Then we have the loaded glove. This is for uh, it's for your punches. It's 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 when you see someone with a punchable face, you just let them know. I recommend buying them in a pair, but one should do the trick. Up next, Solomon, you're gonna love this one. It's a Leah lute, but really what it is, it's a multi-instrument. It, you think of an instrument and it will transform into any instrument that you like. And here's the, here's the cherry on top. You cannot destroy it. You, let's say you, you look at this guy over here, the, not the green guy. I would never say anything bad about him, but the the other guy with the mask. You you bash him over the head with with the instrument and it explodes and then lickety split back to its original form. It's oh. a keeper. You're gonna hit me with that? No, no, I, just hypothetically, Roscoe would never hit anybody. Roscoe is a Solomon, pacifist. Solomon, he's gonna hit me. Solomon. That's good, I like that. Up next, we have a lovely accessory for any outfit. We call it a savage hat. And it is the perfect disguise. For those of you who want to avoid detection, you just wear this, you wear this subtle hat and poof, you are somebody completely, completely different. Yeah. In addition to that, 
you have a chance of growing a luscious mustache while wearing the hat. Up next, we have the contender belt. This is just for big boys, okay? So, Solly, I'm sorry. This is not going to fit you very well. And and uh, our masked friend over here, I'm sorry. I did not get your name. How rude of me. Uh, my name is Roscoe. Right, right. <laughs> uh, Solly, Solly, what, what is our friend's... Who introduced me to your friend? Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, everybody. This is Roscoe. Uh, me and him go way back. Um, this is uh, Zinthral and Bronson and Gator and Rosa. We're uh, taking on the King's Road. Mr. Zinthral, it is a pleasure to meet you. I have heard the name before. It's wonderful to finally put a face put a mask to the name i love your belt it is perfect never change okay the... why is he... that's a question why is he trying to talk to zinthra well he's extremely drunk <laughs> he doesn't know <laughs> this is just you <laughs> that's true but like it's visible like the guy's trying to fly <laughs> you, so you don't get judged in coal town if you would please forgive uh, our friends in thrall, we had a hard time uh, on the sea getting out here. We had a rough journey, you know, one in a million shot. We got attacked by the Kraken. It was it was bad news. It's but we Sally told him what you for. you know what we say around here. He points at the sign. Your business is none of our business. We, we don't judge here, okay? I, I see the, the, the beautiful belt around his waist, and I thought our big friend here would, would like a big belt. Uh, and here's the kicker. He's strong now. Wait until he wears this belt and just see how strong he is. He'll be able to lift a horse. He'll lift right. two horses. Listen. Well, what's that one going for? Oh, it's a little pricey. It's it's. I, I'm, I won't I won't lie to you. It's a little pricey. It's that one is four thousand, four thousand gold pieces. Well, yeah, I don't know if we have what it takes to uh, buy the big boy belt. Sorry. Well, well you, you know you know how things are here. We we can finance. We can we have layaway. We have oh. we have some different programs here. Uh, I'm no longer allowed to do consignments, but, you know, we well, can... Yeah. Are, as the Gnome Depot open to maybe doing a little bit of sponsorship? Could we potentially be wear some of your branding while we take on the uh, all the biggest places in every territory? Yeah, now, the now we're talking. Now we're talking. Hey. That's, uh, that's, Solomon, uh, Solomon. No, I look horrible in orange. No. Uh, roll it's me man. It's fine. So, I'll, I'll be the no mascot. Let's have a persuasion <laughs> check. Solomon, we don't forget that we're also being sponsored by the Risky Rabbit, and perhaps That's exactly right. they can help put some of our supply bill. We got paid up front a little bit, but as we continue to, to you know, uh, continue down this path of mutual uh, benefit... Perhaps, uh, perhaps we can put it on their tab. Yeah. Um, alrighty. So, uh, persuasion. Uh, there's a little, uh, twinkle from my waistband as my magic pants kick in. Ah. And, uh, um, I got a dirty 20. (laughs) Ooh. So, Roscoe is very excited to talk to his boss, Stern, uh, about this lucrative sponsorship, uh, uh, opportunity so as as soon as stern returns to the uh to to the facility that's that's something that will be ran up the flagpole yeah not only would we rep we'd be repping their brand you know we'd also be showcasing their wares Mm, that's true that's That's right that's right say less you know it's you got you're there roscoe's Mm -hmm. convinced (laughs) All right, all right. So that'll easily get us a, a decent line of credit along. I mean, maybe everybody could uh, 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 pick something that they would like. 
Well, that that's something you'll have to work out with Stern. This is this is Stern's house, okay? It's all not right, it's not right, Roscoe's right. house. It's Stern's house. But if by chance there was maybe something that you and a couple of the boys might be willing to do off the books for me that maybe Stern might not need to know about. What do you have in mind? Well, um, kind of look around at everybody. And I look at Rosa for a second. I like, pardon me for a second, and I speak in gnomish. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, I understand gnomish. God damn it. But I don't know that. <laughs> I'm like, all right, Roscoe. So uh, you know that really uh, potent hooch that you got, the stuff that, like, will light up uh, real easy? Oh, yeah. Which one? I, oh, yeah. I was hoping that maybe we could turn some of that uh, flammable alcohol into kind of like a a, a bit of a firebomb. And, and maybe you could cook a few of those up for me uh, off the books. Roll persuasion. And I assume I hear and understand that, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to look at him weird. 18. Okay. Um, so Roscoe says, in Gnomish... We, we can work something out here. Let's just be discreet about that. Like, we don't want to tip off our vertically gifted friends here. Oh, of, of course. Of, of course. I mean, just because, you know, things have been really tense lately, I don't know how all of them would react to um, what I got in mind. But... Okay. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. So, if I may finish my sales pitch here... Uh, the next yeah. item is, you're going to love this. It looks like an ordinary 2x4, but it's not. It's a vicious 2x4. It's a great 2x4. It's a lot of damage, okay? You can you can smash the hell out of anything with this guy. Uh, it's, it's a magic stick, okay? Uh, I don't know how else to say, to say this more plain than that, but... All it's, the best wood is at Gnome Depot. Th- th- this is exquisite wood. It is the the oh, very oh, best. Uh, the, the the trick is you never wipe the blood off of the wood. That sounds terrible. We're gonna move on. Next up, we got the body oil, and this is for the sexy boys who like to take the shirts off. Uh, it makes them extra extra slippy, and very hard to get a hold of. Uh, You'll be slippier than a greased pig, which I've been told is very, very slippy. And finally, the lotion. Th- that's right. Yeah, I mean, if you like lotion, nothing's going to moisturize like the body oil. Uh, it's a matter. <laughs> I fr- it was supposed to be called more than just body oil. <laughs> that was the name that uh, made the final cut. <laughs> uh, oh my. That's What's right. going on. <laughs> No, we're just talk, okay. talking about body oil. So, uh, Zinthral, you may like this item. The body oil uh, raises your AC when applied to bare skin. That's the body like oil. This item. And finally, we've got the squared circle ring. For those wishing to live a healthy lifestyle and improve their overall life force, uh, it will... It'll make you feel real good. It's it's the best feeling that you can have uh, with with a ring. Uh, so I I can't I can't fully explain what these items do because I haven't tested them out myself. Um, I'm a little afraid to do that, and Stern forbids it because ever since the incident where. It, you, you know the gnome that blew up that one time. We don't what talk about. What if you had some willing yeah. contingent that was able to field test this gear for you? Oh, okay. To verify its safety and uh, and its effectiveness. Well, you'll have to sign a waiver first. Oh, of course. Yeah. Do, what yeah. about hazard pay? Yeah. No, 
no, I'm not going to pay you to blow yourself <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. Has no. your credit then uh, on That's the end exactly of the <laughs> Oh, I. Uh, can I ask we'll talk to Stern. Me? We're we're gonna talk to Stern about it. Well, we gotta stop trying to make deals with old Roscoe here. There you go. So, <laughs> it these are the retail prices for these items. Do you see anything here that that really catches your eye? Uh, the they, board. They're not gonna last very long. They're gonna be gone in in a day or two. There's nothing the lasts board. long around here. The board. The oh the the stick. The vicious two by four. Okay. Do do you have enough on you to cover the cost? What does it do? Oh, the oh, it's a vicious two by four. It deals a lot of damage, and uh, it's a it's a big, great club. It and it also you can prop it against things, and uh, you know you can write words on it. It's I mean it's a anything you could do with a board you can do this, but you can also beat the hell out of things with it. Yeah, it's also like eight feet long. Yeah, yes. I feel yes, like the board is kind of a Bronson thing. Uh, you might be interested in the loaded glove. Uh, I want the glove. I want the uh, glove, and I want to put it on the board. <laughs> yeah. Gator has a question. And you want to board punch people? <laughs> okay, Gator. Mr. Roscoe, just a moment ago, you claimed that one gnome that blew up is it not a fact that all gnomes are combustible well everybody's combustible under the right yeah, conditions i was about to say the same thing i mean uh but explain the statistic that close to 50 percent of gnomes mortality rate is related to combustion or explosive decompression what's the well, deal with that well Roscoe that is because 50 percent of the gnomish population is tinker gnomes Sir, and they just live a more hazardous life than uh, wood gnomes like myself. And we thank them for their service. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so one more thing uh, on the menu here. If you look at the bottom of the flyer, as always, smiles are free. And then I want that. <laughs> Roscoe gives you this big cheery <laughs> smile. His cheeks get all rosy. And he is just so proud of himself. <laughs> You're done good, Rasco. We definitely need to. So when is Stern coming back? Are you coming back tomorrow or what? Well, first thing in the morning, people come lining up at the door at 6 a.m. I, I don't get it. You know? I don't think we're going to accomplish that feat, but we'll be here tomorrow morning then. Great. There's a 6 o'clock in the morning now? I mean, unless we want to walk out with anything here right now, but we might get a better deal later. Any any way that some of these could be set aside until we have a discussion with Stern? Oh, you would like to reserve one of these items? A couple of them, actually. If you can put a deposit down, that can certainly be arranged. A deposit can be arranged. Uh, let's say a 10% deposit for anything you would like to reserve. Is that non-refundable? No, no, it's refundable. Oh, okay. I mean, if you blow up, I'm going to keep it, and then it's not <laughs> refundable. Uh, but be, beyond that, I mean, uh, we, let's say within a week's time, if, if you don't come back to either pick up your deposit or to pay off the remainder of the, of the total, uh, that we will keep the fee. Does that sound fair and reasonable? Yeah. It's a so, deal. So he if sticks, we're not back in a, in a week, then chances are we're probably dead anyway. So <laughs> He says, so shall we seal it with a nose kiss? No. I look at Solomon, <laughs> I'm like, is, is, this a, is this a custom? <laughs> yeah. It's classic gnomish culture. All right. Uh, I, I give him the Eskimo rubs. I would... Uh, I would love to reserve the belt and the ring. Uh, hopefully, we can come to some sort of agreement with Stern. Uh, but at least I want to—I want to make sure that that stuff doesn't just fly out in the morning. Okay. Yeah. No one's touching my face. I really want the glove. So, like, are we like? Can we? Can we all put a deposit down? 
for each item? Yeah, I mean, I don't have any money. I'm assuming that we've we're I sort mean, of, you know collectively. How much does everybody have? have? Money. I've been hoarding a bit of the party money at this point, like because I am your sponsor, I'm your uh, your manager. I just I, I don't necessarily trust all of you guys to spend your money wisely. Um, <clears throat> So, I would like to honestly nominate Solomon to be our company treasurer. No. Uh, that way we don't have to worry about this stuff. Another Solomon point. seems to be – he's been around the block. He's hes hes not going to get taken by any fly-by-night schemes or anything like that. So I'm, I'm good with putting all of our coffers in his hands. I second that. Solomon is J.J. Dillon. Got it. So uh, I, have a, I have a question. Yeah. How much would the gun go for? Oh, you want to sell the yeah, gun? Yeah, I guess we do have some stuff to trade, don't we? Like, I, I want to know, like, how much how much can I bring down yeah. with the gun? Because, well, like, honestly, we I can don't really feel like I need the gun. Sure. We can trade some items as well. We can appraise some items. Um, do you want to assess the value yourself? Oh, wait, wait. We could make it a gift to Stern. Ooh. Mm. That's not a bad idea. It's a pretty fine if looking we're, one. If we're re if we're not planning on using it, and it's a, you know, for lack of a better term, an explosive device, uh, that may that may get his uh, uh, hmm. peak his interest. Yeah, at least a, you know, uh, make him more amenable to maybe some of these discussions that we're uh, proposing. It sounds like Still, a pretty good bargaining chip. To the the idea is that. Right now, to me, it seems pristine because I've only ever shot it once, but I have no idea if anyone else has used it. We know it works. <laughs> yep. It's that's combat really ready. <laughs> I see. That's not a bad idea to trade the pistol. Additionally, um, I got to ask anybody, is anybody particularly interested? I mean, I think it's a great idea, and I have lots of ideas, but some of these items here seem particularly more useful to, for the rest of the group. So would anybody be opposed to trading in? And I reach into my pocket, and I pull out the sock. I say, the commissioner... <laughs> You're gonna stick them with that guy, Roscoe. Do you do you speak any of the planar tongues? Oh, uh, Roscoe sp speaks common. Ah, uh, do you know anybody who might speak? Oh, wait, we need to go to the church. That's where we need to talk talk to the commissioner. <laughs> Are we sure? Are we I don't to... know if that's the best idea yeah. to put on the demon sock. <laughs> we don't that's know if the demon. demon speech. It's, it speaks abyssal, no? We don't know what it speaks. We just I don't know, know we don't but speak it. <laughs> I'm, I'm using the term colloquially, not as if I actually know what it is. I, I, when I put my hand in that thing, I feel like a demon is screaming at me. <laughs> Fair enough. And it looks, you know, terrifying. And it's That's great, and I feel like I could use that to my advantage, without a doubt. But uh, at the same time, like, like I said, some of these items seem like they'd be particularly more useful to the rest of the group. Um, the commissioner's a little out there. <laughs> out of character, I'd be super bummed to not know what the whole deal with the commissioner. <laughs> I was about to say in your idea. In character, in character, I would understand. It's like, oh yeah, you know, it's it's a it's you know fungible currency at that point. But okay. out of character, like I want to hear this thing speak. I <laughs> one thousand percent agree. And oh god, see, on third level, I third level spells, I could pick up tongues. It would be a total waste just to talk to the commissioner. <laughs> I am all for taking it to the church, uh, especially because the. What if the you take him Catholic... away? <laughs> we can convince him not to. We we both are like we're both proficient in persuasion. We need to no no. We need to have a seance before he goes anywhere. Somebody needs to cast tongues or something, and otherwise channel this sock. We need to have a seance session. Uh, we'll yeah, because we don't have enough pit yeah, feeds nice. in our life, right? <laughs> Clearly. Exactly. The very yeah, important yeah. member of the group. You can stick around. I got some plans that he might be included in anyway, so. We still have mm -hmm. to stick him on to, uh, 
little, little what, what's his name? Cupcake. I don't remember his name right now. No, Snuggle Snuggle Cup. Cup. How dare. He's so, going on his tail. He's going to attack really, really hard. Speaking of Snuggle over. Cup, I was going to maybe talk to Roscoe about commissioning a magical item that would not only let Snuggle Cup perhaps understand common, but maybe also be able to speak common. So he'd be Simba. He, he would sound like Jonathan Taylor Thomas? Effectively, in, like, in game, it would be nice kid. to be able to talk to him. And out of game, uh, you don't have any handle animal cons uh, uh, checks anymore at that point. It's just he's not got a high intelligence score, but he doesn't have to be trained. He can just be told. So when you're trying to convince him to do something, is that a persuasion check at that point? Oh, and I think I was just trying to see if that's something that's within the realm of production. Where if you were to, you know, to make a, a custom magic item, would that be something that they would be able to do? Uh, like a collar, give, or speak with animal, or some shit. Give like me that. an arcana check. Oh, this yeah. is going to be hot garbage. Let me and Gata uh, think about this for you. Yeah. <laughs> If I'll give them the broad strokes, they can decide whether or not it's it's something that can actually be physically done, and then we can broach the subject with Roscoe, I guess. Okay. Well, one of us can certainly assist. I have a I have a five. I don't know what you're rocking. Yeah, for I would arcana. I would say either Solomon or or Gator. Mine's run plus the, run the arcanic three because I'm a little proficient. Ah, well. uh... But I'll you, do the roll and can Solomon give me an advantage? You're the only uh you're Gator's the only one that's proficient in Arcana, is that right? I, I know that Solomon has jack of all trades, but Oh, okay, that's... so he's not properly trained, he just knows a little bit of everything. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I, I have okay, half I, proficiency, I, I, so I have a I do it on my own then. Okay. Seventeen. So okay, so you effectively describe to Roscoe what you're looking for in a way to where it's possible and Roscoe understands and says, it's going to take a little while to get something like that manufactured. Well, let me talk to Stern about it. We have a guy that can sure. take custom to requests. And, Imagine... Uh, when everybody from the capital city of every territory is going, did you see that lion that talks and is with those champions and the collar on it says Gnome Depot on it? Hey, that's none of my business, okay? That's your business, and your business is none of our business. So... We will not ask We're trying you to why. do business with Gnome Depot, so it is your business. Again, this will be a stern talk, I guess. It's going to be a stern talking to, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but custom requests uh, are available. They are pricey. But All right, we'll stern can make it happen. That. All right. We got to come back tomorrow and talk to Stern. Uh, tonight, we'll compile our assets before we get a nice rest off of that godforsaken boat. Say that again? Uh, sounds good to me. <laughs> we're going to sleep on not the boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to sleep on not the, the boat. Right. Right. And uh, everybody's going to give me uh, all the money you get. Are so you're amenable to that. Stick up. <laughs> Gator, Gator, you go to like look for your coin purse. You're like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember how much you had, Gator? Because I wrote it down. I didn't put it in my on on my sheet because I was gonna give it back to you. Um, Good thing I didn't erase. I had 130 gold pieces. All right, cool. So Solomon is effectively the agent for all the talent now. Uh, making uh, all the money deals. Yes. Okay, very well. Well, Roscoe has a date with some milk and cookies, so if that'll be all, he will release you uh, onto the rest of the town. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll be back first thing in the morning. 
Well, I, I would... ball the hat and then I turn leave with the group. Right on. Uh, so before you leave, he gives Snuggle Cup a treat and give him a little scratch behind the ear. Uh, this cat is already basically the, the size of Roscoe. Uh, now a month older than it was when you originally oh, yeah. adopted him. Um, he's grown in size somewhat. After he can understand commands, he's going to be a year older than he was. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. He's using that cat. I don't believe that's ethical, but you know what? Whatever. So, <laughs> Anything that works. Are there any other places that we are going to adventure to this evening before heading to bed for a long rest? So I'd say we could go to the moon door just to try and maybe get some intel on the mountain clans or something like that. Um, I don't know if that's... I think we've kind of resolved ourselves to just go deal with that situation regardless. <laughs> I was going to ask what, what again, the moon door was, because that was the name that stood out to me. I a couldn't remember if that was... Super, a super rowdy whorehouse. Yeah, it's very okay. trashy. It's uh, loud, whereas the Risky Rabbit is sophisticated and is discreet. The moon door is not. It thrives on its reputation as being uh, rowdy, yeah, is a, is a good word for it. They're known for their indiscretions. That might bring out a side in Gator, so uh, I, I'd, I'd rather go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I, go, I, I go to bed now, or I don't go to sleep tonight. Up to you guys. <laughs> I need spells. Yeah, I'm kind of with the going to bed thing, plus I... I... There's some paperwork I wanted to get done before a game. And again, if anybody uh, wants to contribute any funds to a collective group fund, um, I'll be happy to uh, add that to my notations. Yeah, go ahead and add 35 gold to your uh, to your uh, coffers. The 35? It's too much, but it's honest living. Check out the church in the uh, in the morning, probably, if it's late in the evening already. Yeah, because we still need more intel on the water being poisoned, which I have a feeling is heavily due to the mining that's going on. Um, we do not mine in the best of conditions here, that's for sure. Someone poison the water hole. But it may be as simple as purifying water rather than having to cease operations. So uh, are we decided we're going to the Risky Rabbit or did Rosa need to go to the temple? Um, I'll save the temple for the morning. Okay, fair enough. Big, big sleepo. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so everybody takes... A long rest, you were able to get right to your room, room number 11, without much interruption. Uh, I think we said there were four or five beds in the room. There's, uh, There should be enough in there for everybody to have a place to sleep. Uh, Snuggle Cup can lay on top of somebody. Um, but when you wake up, everybody roll a constitution check. Oh, shit. Man, I'm doing decent. 17. 17 here as well. 22. Ooh. Natural 20. 22. 22. Oh, come on, y'all. I need I need to roll still. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Oh. No. no. There it is. There's the <laughs> old <Nope>. gator. <laughs> no. No, my new name is Hershey. <laughs> Let, let's give a roll bonus. let's roll for snuggle cup as well no <laughs> okay <laughs> so the 22s uh, including snuggle cup all wake up at the same time um, you can hear somebody outside of your door footsteps and shadows under the door and then they disappear at this point the 
uh, the two of you, that was Solomon and Rosa, correct? That was me. Was uh, Z- I got a Zinthral. 17. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. It was Rosa and Zinthral. And yeah, there were the 22s. And Snuggle Cup are all alarmed. Uh, you kind of sit up, you look at the door, you look at each other, and you're aware that the two of you are awake and uh, that something was just outside the door. Can I check? Can I be sneaky about it? Uh, how's, how's, describe what you do. So I slowly get up and I slowly start to open the door to see if there's any activity out there. Yes, in fact, there is a basket outside your door, but there's nobody in the hallway. Can I, like, see if there's any traces of them? Anything else left behind besides uh, the basket? Yeah, uh, give me a survival check. Gotcha. That is a 17. Okay. Yeah, so you, you can tell that whoever it was that dropped this off headed back towards not towards the front of the business but towards the back of the business where the offices and the dressing rooms are so can I head over there can I I, I want to I want to investigate this further okay let's, let's make sure the basket's not crying <laughs> I'm not worried about that <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, I Rosa. can check out the basket yeah yeah so, now that I know uh, it's safe okay so Safe-ish. Investigating the basket, uh, you, you don't have to roll for this. You notice that there are, there's some risky rabbit memor- memorabilia in the basket. Uh, as part of your sponsorship deal, there's a little note in there that says, "Happy to have you as part of a team." You know, go, um, go, young lions. We hope to continue this sponsorship uh, between the risky rabbit and the young lions. You know, go win the Masters tournament. Okay, so I'm just being jumpy for nothing. We're good. <laughs> right, so... But there's a false bottom with an explosive device. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rosa, you see Zinthro is sneaking down this dimly lit hallway, uh, heading towards the back of the business. I'm just gonna be like, hey, psst. Yeah? It's, it's fine, dude. It's, oh, okay. It, okay. It, it's, it's a... Merch and or things, uh, things to wear. There's some the rabbit stuff. The There's last time up. someone, the last time someone gave me a basket, I don't want to talk about it, actually. <laughs> There's also some snacks in there, and there is a jar of some type of clear liquid. Huh. Can I sniff the liquid? Oh, you'd like to? Oh, no, uns- you're gonna fly again. <laughs> Unscrew the cap. Yeah. Moonshot. Uh, yeah, so you unscrew the cap, and it has a very alcoholic smell to it. it yeah, I go. Ooh, nice hooch. Air the dog. And uh, I will go ahead and just gently take that away from him. <laughs> I'm saving some for Gator. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> we, we don't need you to fly again, buddy. I'm Okay. This week on Drunk Lions. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> Zinthro, you haven't been feeling great. Right, the yeah. you've been feeling physically amazing, like strong, fast, but you have been having headaches and just this strange feeling about you, except for when you drank the moonshine the day before, and you totally forgot about all of that. And I and completely f- did. Well, you no, you for, you forgot about these uh, strange feelings you've been having. Uh, the hallucinations, the odd dreams, all you just kind of, um, you know, we're kind of numb to all that after having some of that drink that Duke Diamond gave you yesterday. I just realized something. I'm gonna go back into the room where, you know, where it's private. I'm gonna finally, finally take off the mask. Okay. So, uh, give me a constitution roll. I knew I wasn't going to do that. I knew I was going to... I knew it. I knew it. Can you peel it off like in the mask where like a bunch of his face starts to come with it? That's a 19. (laughs) A 19. 
Okay, great. So you you start to unlace the back of the mask and Rosa, give me a perception check. Perception? 14? All right, so you don't notice him doing this. And Zinthral, you loosen up the laces just enough to pull the mask up and over your head and just kind of sit it in, uh, hold it in front of you with both hands. You're kind of looking inside the mask where it's got, it's got these designs on the inside of it that are almost swirling a little bit. And, uh, and you, you don't, um, you start to feel not, I don't know that withdrawal is the right word, but you start to feel uneasy about being seen without a mask on. It's been a long time since anyone has seen you without the mask. It's I'm, I'm not going to be forced to put it back on, right? I, I made the I made the I made the saving throw, right? You made the saving throw. You you haven't you don't have any conditions on you right now, and you've taken no damage. Yeah, I'm going to just place it in my back so I don't feel the need to put it back on for now. You, you place the mask into the bag of holding, which is has a tear in it? Oh, no, no, my backpack. Oh, okay. Understood. Okay, well, now, Rosa, now you see Zinthral without the mask. What's up? And can can you do that? <laughs> do what? Uh, walk around without your mask on? I thought that was like a thing with wrestlers and all that. That's what my research told me. That's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it, I mean, like you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's half right, but I don't really care. I just I just felt like breathing, you know. Zinthral, give me a charisma check. I'm making a lot of checks. It's a big moment. It is a big moment. Uh, that is a. That is an eight. Eight. So, <laughs> Rosa, you're being very polite to him, but you're kind of repulsed by how he looks with the mask on. <laughs> it's not to say that he's an ugly person, but he probably needs a shower uh, and uh, could use a makeover, you know, a little queer eye for okay. the straight guy. It is a very looks big like change. right now. Very, very big change of tone from the first episode where you said he's handsome. <laughs> well, he had a mask on then too, right? No, he, he didn't actually. Oh, he didn't start with the no, mask? Like evil ash. No, yeah, like, he, I, 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 yeah, yeah. He, had his, he had his just regular lucha mask, didn't he? No, I, I don't know why everyone keeps on saying he did. He never did. He never had a mask to begin with. It's, he, the, he, it's the character You portrait. always did in the art. It, yes, I know. That was like... That was foreshadowing, though. Like, really poor, a, a really poor way of foreshadowing, because, like, it's right there, but... I think <laughs> so, he didn't have so one to, So to retcon this, it's, uh, uh, for some reason, in all of our minds, it's, like, the first time that he's we've ever seen him without, without the mask. We don't remember a time where he's, he's right. worn a mask. It's like, it's just, it's just empty in our heads in, in terms of times that uh, that, that he's, he's been maskless. Technically, be for me... Well, <laughs> yeah, and Solomon, because Solomon met you guys after you left the mask shop to go and register. You know what? Yeah, he's, he he probably smells himself. He's probably just gonna go, you know, take a morning shower. So we'll we'll say this way uh, that Rose has never seen you without the mask, and that it's been on for quite a long time. That your skin is uh, maybe uh, a little wrinkled. Uh, it's a magical mask that may have done some alterations to your pristine face from episode one. And you just don't look the way she expected you to look without the mask on. So it's just, it's kind of an odd situation. That's not to say it's, uh, cannot be redeemed in, in some way, but, uh, just it, it's, it's an awkward moment between the two of you. He's got like that chiseled jaw that sticks out from under the uh, under the mask, but then like you look at him and his nose is a little too small and his eyes are a little too, too far apart. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
got like, a bit of crow's nest going on. No, no, he's at, he's got like perfect symmetry, which is not supposed to happen, so it's unsettling. <laughs> yeah, he's in the uncanny valley. For some reason, yeah. the eyes just don't look right. <laughs> I got this M. Bison's avatar. I got this mental image of Quagmire when he takes the mask <laughs> off. <laughs> you can, you can. It's like strong chin, but ooh. <laughs> I should probably get this looked at. Do you bathe in Aqua Velva? Yes. You don't. All right, no. so Zenthral, you start to notice that the rest of the group is starting to wake up, uh, and uh, Snuggle Cup is not startled by your appearance. Doesn't care, not bothered by it at all, uh, but is very interested in the snacks that are in the basket. Uh, prior to everybody finally rising from their slumber, does the mask stay off or does it go back on? Yeah, it's staying off. Staying off. Okay. It's enough. So now everybody is awake, and the rest of the party, Gator, Solomon, Bronson, you are now faced with Zinthral, looking different than he did in episode one. Hey, who's that guy? What's up? Something's different here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. Who are you and what have you done with the synth? Shaved a mustache. Did you have a mustache? I can't remember. <laughs> Did I have a mustache? Did you get a haircut? Did you take a shower? I don't believe I've had one on my face. Mustache? Uh, no. Roll for a mustache. Roll mustache? Yeah. <laughs> mustache check. <laughs> Do you that want a mustache? That's a 19. 19. We, I got no choice now. Uh, I'm high rolling today. No, there's no mustache. Every graphic we have of Zinthral, there's no mustache. There's no mustache. There is now. There is now. Hey, if, you, if you buy the Savage hat and you put it on, you can grow a lush, full mustache. Hey, that's what I was about to say. If uh, we're, we're going to talk to Stern today at some point, um, you guys want to do that before you head up the mountain and do your challenge? Because you guys could probably just get that out of the way. You know, I kind of want to get this looked at. I don't know why I look like this. Yeah, let's go. Uh, Let me go to the church. Let me see if they can do anything about this. <clears throat> let's, let's go visit Stern just because we've sort of got a standing appointment based off of what we've talked to Roscoe. And then, yeah. I don't understand. We, Did you fall asleep with your face in the corner? What happened? We can absolutely <laughs> head to, uh, head up the mountain on one of two paths. All right. Let's, let's, uh, get to the church first. Because, uh, you know, I uh, met you when you were wearing your mask, so, um, I thought maybe that was just a, a PR idea, but if this isn't right, then, yeah, we should get you checked out. Yeah, now the uh, now the mask is off. I'm starting to, you know, not feel so good. So I'm, I kind of want to go to the church. To the church. The plague doctor. In the, the in the doctor. basket. Do we have any like requirements to like? Is it just a, like a, a welcome basket, or is it uh, uh, got some supplies that uh, have to be worn as a as you know uh, us holding up our end of the deal? This is like a, a little hotel basket, right? There are some uh, toiletries in there, some snacks, some candy, some alcohol. Uh, there, uh, there's a hat, uh, like a, like a, uh, like a golf hat, right, with the the Risky Rabbit logo on top. Uh, there's a shirt in there that can be uh, worn. It's, I mean, it's a medieval type shirt. What do you, whatever you call that. Um, with the logo of the Risky Rabbit on the front of it. Uh, there's a towel with the Risky Rabbit on it. So, uh, you know, just some light items. If uh, if there's anything you guys are looking for, we can roll and test your luck. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure that we didn't have, like, some rider in a contract that says that we have to be repping it while we're, while we're out and about or anything. Nope. Huh. I, no. I didn't figure as much since it's more of a big picture deal of us dealing with the hard way and making sure that their um, uh, women's shelter network, you know, uh, is positioned well. No, th this is a genuine gift from Duke Diamond, who has just been nothing but nice since you guys met him. Uh, 
He, uh, whereas Smooth runs a tight ship and don't have no time for your trouble, uh, Duke is just happy to have visitors who are, uh, you know, still have all of their teeth. Um, I think it might be wise uh, moving forward now that, uh, I mean, as soon as you guys get your badges, we're going to have access to room number six. So uh, once that's available, I say we continue to make Territory 7. I like base of operations. Um, There's just less scrutiny here. There's less trouble around. And, you know, honestly, if the hard way turns up along the road here... Ain't nobody gonna look twice if we run their asses out of town. Yup. I also would like to position ourselves uh, to be sort of the favored sons of this territory, if at all possible. Uh, I wanna, I wanna make sure that we handle the mountain clans, and I wanna get try to get a good relationship with Stern uh, built out that way. I, like, just like you said, using, using. Uh, uh, Colville as our de facto uh, home away from home uh, definitely seems like the right call in terms of us not being harassed in terms of you know uh, being able to to promote ourselves and and uh, help the community it, it seems like it's a it's a uh, a perfect uh, candidate for uh, for a base of operations yeah Great. I mean, we've already like basically figured out that hey, there's some like rougher sides of town, but for the most part, we haven't seen any like real trouble. I mean, it was the, like a pickpocket, but that's everywhere. Well, and we don't necessarily have to advertise that you know we're based out of here or anything like that, but just having the citizens know that we're a presence in town, yeah. uh, that that you know doesn't just we're not just fly by night. Uh, that that we've you know uh, may not be may not be news. You know, I, I I don't think that we'll be announcing our matches that we're all hailing from Colville, uh, right. but <laughs> you know uh, having it be a a low key place to to you know hang uh, while. Uh, Apparently, you know, places like Lucha Lucha Town are uh, a little less favorable to us now. I agree. For now. And in regards to uh, lingering blame for the Lucha Lucha Town, I want everybody to know I have an idea for kind of a propaganda campaign. I've been working up some literature. This is spread some rumors throughout the territories. Once we have access to door number six, it'll be really easy to spread information really fast. And and see if I can't skew the public image away from blaming us for that situation. Can I ask uh, Solomon and uh, Gnomish, does this involve the firebombs? Uh, there's like a flash of panic across the <laughs> eyes, but then just super smooth to everybody else. It's like, well, uh, it, it, it could be involved. You know, pyrotechnics are always a good thing to have along the King's Row. Make a flashy display. Everybody loves a show. Are you telling the party this? <laughs> well, I said that back to you in Nova. Okay, one to make sure. One to make sure we were clear. <laughs> hmm. I'm just going to give you the side eye and kind of <laughs> move on. I do have a question for the DM. Yes. Um, if we were to take on a possible sponsorship with the uh, Gnome Depot, will that affect our relationship with the Risky Rabbit? Well, you'll have to ask them. I don't think so, based off the fact that <clears throat> the, the tenets of the agreement can be honored, you know, without any conflict between the two. At, yeah. at least at this point, the way the way that I'm envisioning it is that the agreement between the Risky Rabbit and the Young Lions is that we deal with the hard way and try to, you know, ensure that the the women's safety network doesn't get compromised in any way. And we try to, you know, promote that. That seemed to be our, you know, secondary goal at least. Um, and so the agreement that at least I think Solomon and I are looking into with, with Stern is more of a product placement and uh, material sponsorship rather than um, 
rather than an ideological sponsorship. I'm not wearing orange. It's pretty classic practice for um, contenders for the Masters Tournament on the King's Road to try to build up as many sponsors as possible to, to get the word out there, sway public opinion, uh, get themselves gear and equipment, it, transportation, uh, housing. It's an expensive process to spend your whole year trying to go after this endeavor, traveling all over the world. Um, so, um, I don't think there should be any reason why any individual sponsor should have a problem with multiple sponsorships. Okay, I might, uh, get in contact with Mistress Wolf just to make sure because... Just in case. I am actually the, uh, I believe that my presence is actually part of the sponsorship. That's what I should be wrong with that. Yeah, let's. I, I have no problem with making sure that we're not going to be entering any into conflict of, of interest. Let me get a history check from both Rosa and from Solomon. Okay, this falls within my divine domain, so proficiency bonus is doubled. You said history check? Yes. So I have 12. Uh, 21 overall. Okay, so uh, Solomon, you've never actually heard of any fighters having multiple sponsorships. They're kind of rare in your experience, uh, but um, you'll have to share with the group just how far your previous contenders have gotten. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I've never had anybody actually make it into the Masters tournament. Rosa, your experience with Mistress Wolf is that she does not mind being a co-sponsor of a challenger at all. So she does, she's not focused on exclusive sponsorship deals. She gets behind a cause, she gets behind a challenger, and does what she can to Take the lead. I don't know anything about this business. So you enter this temple, which is not quite as nice as the ones you've seen in other cities. It's not as nice as the one you're, uh, where you grew up. Um, now is probably a good time. Rosa, tell, tell the group a little bit about your, your upbringing and your mother. All right, so um, basically Rosa, she started her training by following in the footsteps of her mother um, as a cleric of Moradin. Um, basically, since a distant relative of dwarven descent, uh, women in the line basically are expected to enter the temple and pledge service. Um, and that's kind of that. And then, you know, that I'm, I was an outspoken child but my mother was very patient with me. So, uh, how much more do you want me to go into it? Uh, th th that's fine. So the okay. the temple that you trained in was devoted to a singular god, correct? Yes, the uh, uh, did. yes. The dwarven god. Yes. This particular temple is a multi-faith temple, which is which honors multiple gods uh just the benevolent gods so any of the evil gods are not represented here uh in in this temple as you enter it's relatively empty because this is not a the holy day of the week and you see there is a clergy person 
that is sorting through some documents. She looks up at you and she is quite stunning um, as she's dressed modestly. She uh, She's still uh, relatively young and, and good looking. Um, but she looks up to you and prolongs eye contact with specifically with you, Rosa, as if she has known you, recognizes you in some way, or had expected you. And then she returns to you as a smile. Um, just, you know, a, a discreet smile. Um, something that is modest. She, okay. she puts down the scrolls from which she was reading and dust off the front of her of her uh, gown and then starts approaching the group uh, with proper posture and a dignified approach. Is everybody entering the temple? Gator follows. Yes. Sure. Okay. Who is leading the group? Would that be Rosa? Hopefully. I, I assumed it was me, but... Yeah, I, I, I think we're going to well. let the cleric okay. take point walking into a church. Great. Uh, so she approaches you. She says, hello, my child. I'm Mother Isolde. What brings you to uh, our House of the Gods? Well, um... Me and my friends here were in town. Um, I also wanted to pay tribute to Moradin, um, since he's guided us safely across here. But I also wanted to speak with you about some urgent matters that I've heard about in town. So she says, of course, um, you, you're welcome here to, um, to worship and to pay tribute. Um, as a fellow clergy person, perhaps you and I could speak privately while the the rest of your companions pay their tributes to their gods as well. I mean, that sounds fine to me. And I ask the party, you know, you guys cool with that? Yeah. I'm sure there's a book here somewhere I could read something interesting. <laughs> Is religion an important part of the lives of any of the other characters in the party? Not especially. Okay. Only so much as uh, I like to be skeptical, but so there's got to be there's got to be something that can always like overcome my skepticism at some point. Not Bronson's, at all. Bronson's a. Uh respectful but not religious you know he's not he's not gonna uh cause any issues or anything like that but i don't think he's like finding a certain you know statue to go genuflect in front of or anything like that okay uh, very well um uh, okay so uh mother isolde uh walks rosa uh over towards the the altar where there is just three steps up to a platform there are railings on the left and the right, and there is an organ uh, set up on, on your right. Um, the place is, it, it's, if you had it your way, you'd spend a day cleaning this place up and, uh, and really making it glow up a little bit. But <laughs> Mother Isolde is perfectly happy with her devoutness and, uh, and providing a safe haven for anybody seeking spiritual guidance. So she invites you to to tell her more about what 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 troubles you. Well, um, I guess the first thing that really concerns me is um, that a lot of the townsfolk look quite ill when we you know, came up here uh, to the dock. Do you know anything about that? It's the water. As you probably know by now, it's, the okay. well has been corrupted in some way. We've made attempts to cleanse the well, 
but we just don't have enough ability to complete the ritual. In fact, we we are we have the right materials, but we don't have enough magic users in order to complete the ritual. There are only four of us in town, and it takes seven to complete the ritual. Mm -hmm. I might be able to help you with that. Is there a specific school of magic that is like a focus of it, or is it just any sort of magic user? Well, I consulted with my gods and the the ritual is uh, is one of cleansing, and it is a um, what's the word? It's a prismatic cleansing of the waters, which requires one magicite stone of each color and one magic practitioner of each stone in order to magically infuse the waters and rid them of the corruption. Which casters are you short on, if that makes sense? Well, it's uh, it's not specific to the types of casters that we need, okay. as it is more towards the magic stones that we are that we are donating our magical ability to. So okay, the more so the more that we okay. ch- charge the stones with our magical essence, the uh, the more powerful the ritual becomes. Can I ask a question? Yes. What about key? Could key work? It's been tried before. And for a time we thought it worked, but it it, it didn't work. Sedge. And are there any leads as to what is poisoning the water, or is it just that the well is poisoned, basically? Well, it's it, got to be a it, source it, or a reason. It can't be confirmed as to what the source of the corruption is, but the word, the rumor is that it has to do with the last time the capital visited town and with the mining practices going on in the Magicite mines. Okay. Need to take a look at those. Uh, so it sounds like Magicite is not a uh, highly rare commodity. It just needs to be invested in with, with you know, someone's innate magic. Uh, give me a history check, or an ar- give me an arcana check. Is that just uh, Bronson, or are you talking to me? This could be anybody in the party. Okay. Arcana Three. check. Three. That's also my divine domain. Twelve. <laughs> See, uh, I just lost arcana, so that's three and eight five. Nope, never mind. That's a natural one. (laughs) So none of you are familiar with Magicite, what it's used for, how rare it is. Uh, The only experience you have with it is that one of you found an odd stone on the pirate ship. I believe, was it on the body of Pepino? Yep. Uh, so that's gone. So that is yep. a a stone that uh, that <clears throat> matches the description that she's given you thus far. Uh, well, I know where to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to think of the other two questions I had. Um, do you know anything about the raiders up in the mountains? Is I believe what they are. Well, they prefer to be called by a name uh, they they go by the name the Indies and they come to town to replenish their resources they know that the water is poisoned as well 
So they refuse to come down the mountain and they, they guard the mountain fiercely. They are deeply religious people. And they stick to themselves and they typically don't interfere with the rest of the town except to gather resources. They catch a bad rap, but they're not bad people. They are redeemable. Okay. They just come down to replenish resources. Is there... Do they have any sort of conflict with the townspeople when they come down? Because I was given the impression that they were basically raiders and kind well, of tore the town up a little bit. They they take what they need. So they... It, it is theft by, by means of taking what they require, but it's not without purpose, and it's not f- for greed. It is for sustaining their way of life. Uh, and, while I'm not yeah, justified... It, it comes at the expense of, of other people's way of life. I'm not condoning Maybe criminal behavior. some kind of deal. I'm sorry. So why uh, do you think they're... Oh, go ahead. I, I didn't mean to interrupt uh, Solomon. Go ahead. Uh, I just said uh, maybe they could be persuaded to make some kind of deal where they can receive the goods they need in exchange for some other kind of service. In my experience, they're reasonable people. Right. And is that what makes them redeemable to you? They're redeemable because yeah. they're driven by faith. All right. We can at least find out why they're having to stoop to that level uh, before waging hard way justice on them. <laughs> can I ask uh, another question? Of course. Uh, does she detect what's uh, what's happened to me? The curse or whatever? You'd like her to take a look at you? Yeah. Uh, sure. Hey, Solomon, you got that sock? So she can uh, t- she can yeah. tell that you have been afflicted by something. Um, you know, my son, I believe you have been corrupted in some way by a curse. Although it appears that it hasn't taken hold just yet. And to what extent is is not something that I can determine on my own. Yeah, I'm just wondering why one moment I'm, you know, a beautiful man, the next I'm going all hollow here. Well, uh, all of the children of the gods are are beautiful in their own way, and you have a beauty to you as well. Listen, listen, go. I'm going chosen undead here, and I'm not really trying to stay this way. Uh, if if I uh, if it interests you, a cleansing ceremony could be performed, and perhaps could rid you of of any negative side effects. Uh, attained. I would greatly appreciate that. Okay. Um, yeah, but what's the catch? Uh, the, I my soul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the the catch is that it would rec- uh, all I request in return is a donation to the temple yep that's where it always goes every time <laughs> I know. tell you what we might just happen to have three capable spellcasters amongst our group if we were able to help you with your old cleansing ritual, perhaps you could give our friend Zinthral a cleansing on the house? Of course. Yes. If, if we can work together to, to save the well, we would be curing the, an entire town of people. And I fully agree with that, but also cleansing Zinthral. Of, of course, yes. Can we shake on it? <laughs> Solomon's like, cleanse now, magic later. <laughs> uh, if you if you would like to if you would like to um, let's see, 
how do I put this? Um, we can move forward with the cleansing process immediately if you're ready. Uh, we just have to dress you in a ceremonial outfit before it can be done. It's going to be a well, if it's <laughs> Might as well. Might, I mean, that's, I don't see why I should hesitate. Okay. Um, and how soon can we perform this ritual on on cleaning the wells? Oh, well, uh, how long does it take oh. to perform this ritual? Uh, it takes about an hour. All right. I mean, that's not so bad. Maybe um, after we wrap up our business here, we'll go hit up the Gnome Depot and then... Um, We'll go separate ways, and us a uh, support team will hang back here in town and help out with this ritual while the uh, two boys uh, make their climb up the mountain. Sounds good to me. Yep. That's a pretty good uh, balance of our time and resources. There you go. Well, uh, my child... Um... Please come with me, and I will I will help dress you. I will see you guys in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the the actual uh, cleansing ceremony for Zinthral doesn't take quite that long, right? Uh, it takes a little while. She gives you this. Uh, basically, it's like a a white cloak symbolizing purity. To put over top, she she asks you to to disrobe, um, in a private in privacy, to put oh, on God. the the robe over top, uh, and uh, to bring you in front of a a bowl of of blessed water, uh, while she does an incantation. Water. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that actual process doesn't take very long at all. You know, 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, the ritual of cleansing the town well will take over an hour, as uh, she explains a little bit farther. So as you were, you're being cleansed inside the temple, Zinthral, is everybody else just standing around watching? Are you guys cheering them on? Are you, uh, <laughs> you know... Get... Do I get, do I get, wait, do I get I lifted help? up in the process? I play a cleansing song. Do you get lifted up? <laughs> yes, do I get lifted up all holy like... No, not really. No, not. <laughs> They're just cleaning you. <laughs> yet again, I don't fly. You're getting you scrubbed. One day. Congratulations. It's the most you've bathed in years. Ah. <laughs> Can I assist in the ritual, pretty much? Sure. Grab yeah. a scrub brush. Yeah, so go ahead and roll, <laughs> uh, roll religion with advantage. Okay. Right, with advantage. Oh, hey, neither of those were good. Uh, <laughs> do, do religion 11? 11. Just, just an okay. So, so the curse is a little bit um, more intensive than Mother Isolde originally anticipated. Despite the incantations he's reading and the assistance from Rosa, uh, it's it's still not working, and you can see that she is physically. Uh, showing signs of stress on her face as she's she's experiencing something that can't be seen by anybody else. And Zinthral, how do you feel in this moment, knowing that whatever is afflicting you cannot easily be removed? The hell is going on with my dad, <laughs> wherever he is? If he wore the mask for, like, way longer. Okay, so... Rosa, roll a, uh, a religion check one more time. Okay. Uh, no advantage? Without advantage. Okay. That wasn't any better. Ten. <laughs> and Zinthral, roll, you also roll a religion check for me. Okay. Oh, that is... What's a 14? 14. Okay. Great. So, um... 
So Rosa is struggling. Mother Isolde is struggling. Uh, there are witnesses, right? So Pete, you're watching. Solomon, you're watching. Um, Gator, you're watching. And now this is turning into like a scene from The Exorcist, right? Where the, the curtains start to flap in the windows and like the lights are dimming and the candles blow out in the room and uh, it's turning on to and turning into a, a full-on exorcism but uh zen you can feel the something uh, leaving your body and in that moment you start having quick flashbacks and the flashbacks you have are in a series of succession. They don't make sense to you. There is the scene of your mother pregnant. There's the scene of Helmswoggle arresting your father. You see a scene of Harmond. Then you see a, a scene of your father on a boat. And then you see a, a scene of an island approaching in the distance. And then finally, you see your father, Virax, chained up inside a prison cell and with that your eyes snap open there is a burst of energy as miss uh mother isolde is blown back a bit and rosa you also experience this spiritual uh gust um this uh overcome you and is a uh, in in that moment you know that whatever was afflicting Zinthral is now gone. And Gator, oh. you yeah. observe Zinthral, and his face is the same as you remember it. Bronson, he, Zinthral is the same boyish guy that you found in Lucha Lucha Town, who was trying to get you to you guys to try his alcohol and uh, was just happy to just start his journey on the King's Road. Whoa. Am I, am I going to suffer a point of exhaustion because of this? No. In no. fact, your point of exhaustion has been removed. Ooh. Nice. Zinth, how you feeling? Uh, better? The not answer amazing, is not great. You feel confused and uh you feel new. I feel like I was born again. That's oh, great. Do uh, a handstand real quick. We're going to go check on uh, the mother. Okay. I do a handstand. <laughs> and uh, I go check on the mother. Uh, give me an athletics check. That is a 20. Oh, 30, yes. 20. Yeah, one beautiful handstand. A holy handstand. Um, yep. Back to normal. Hand. One hand. All right. Yeah, you're definitely good to climb a mountain in like 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Mother Isolde is uh, propped up on her elbows, you know, uh, with her butt on the floor. And she's, you know, br breathing heavy, ca catching her breath. Um, Rosa, you are still on your feet, but you, you see uh, her and she has a look of satisfaction on her face. We got it. <laughs> That's right. This, the the boy is clear. I try and uh, help a can up. of whoop ass. <laughs> <laughs> Don't waste the whoop ass, Gator. Oh, How I mean, it's feeling? nice to offer. <laughs> Gator's not very charitable, so don't 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 ruin this for him. All right, all right. Uh, so she looks at you, ready to negotiate immediately, and says, uh, first light tomorrow morning, we can begin the cleansing process. Can you and your other two magic users be here at daylight so that we can restore purity back to the town? I mean, I'll be here. Uh, I'm assuming it's, what, Gator and Solomon? Yeah. Come with you. Sure. After what I just saw, I'll be here. All right, fantastic. Question, what exactly left my body? Roll religion. All right. Yeah. Generally, the doctors don't let you see the stuff that they take out. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's Better. not happening. That's a three. You rolled a three? Yeah, that's a three. <laughs> 
Uh, what do you think it is? Well, from our past experience, it's probably a chupacabra. That's definitely what it is. That's definitely what it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no chupacabra. no other explanation is is possible. That had to be a chupacabra. All right. So, uh, how do we celebrate? Well, we uh, had some hooch that we just got. Oh no! It's a little early <laughs> for moonshine. We uh, we need to go talk to Stern yeah, before that merchandise moves, and then we need to get on the on the road. Okay, that's fair. We drink See you later. first daylight. So to the Gnome Depot. All to right, Gnome Depot. So you walk into the Gnome Depot and you see the familiar sign. Oh. It says, "Your business is none of our business," and uh, and there and there you see the gentleman who has to be the man they call Stern. Of course, Solomon, you've met Stern before. Stern is the business owner here. He's a shrewd business person, and he is uh, he has lots of flair. Is the best way to put it. He's styling and profiling. He's He's uh, how does the rest of that go? He's uh, the man of the hour, the man with the power, too sweet to be sour. He is <laughs> something else. A well, if you're going for Billy Graham, Graham, that was a lot of Billy Graham. But if you're going for Ric Flair, wheeling and dealing, kiss stealing, limousine riding, jet flying, woo! Son of a gun. That's Stern. So you walk, it. you walk in, and they go, "Whose house? Stern's house," and. Uh, he recognizes you, you lot immediately because you're the only ones walking around town with lion skins on your backs. Mm-hmm. It's pretty hard to remain unnoticed. Hey, Roscoe's hey. probably giving him a giving him a, a rundown too. Long time no see. He says, How you been? Solomon, welcome back to the Gnome Depot. Can't believe they let you back in town. Well, what are you what are you talking about? It's nothing but a joy whenever I come to town. Sure, sure. I would Hey, your business is none of our business. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Unless, of course, you're interested in talking what could be our business. Oh. Let's talk business. All right. So, um, my my man Roscoe here tells me that there's some potential for us to come to some sort of potential sponsorship agreement. We are absolutely um, heavily favored contenders here upon the King's Road. We've already attracted. Um, some sponsorships from uh, other noteworthy establishments that will be really good to help share the name of the Gnome Depot and get it out there um, for potentially uh, a line of credit or a decent percentage off of some of your wares, which we can also use and make visible amongst the capitals of every territory in the kingdom. Roll Persuasion. And you get not only one champion, but two champions in this situation. 22. 22. Oh, do we know? bearing the name of the Gnome Depot. So which one of you fine individuals is going to be carrying the mantle for the Gnome Depot? You get... You get two for one here. Uh, yeah. Myself and Zenthral over here. Ew. Uh, both. And have, as their uh, representation, our, uh, I will, of course, sport a very uh, um, loud ensemble. You know me. Oh, of course, of course. Well, you know, we've done sponsorships before. You know that, Solomon. You, you know that yeah, we are able to find ways to make money. And Stern here is a business man. Um, we in the money, okay? We know how to make a buck. So 
we are heavily considering the sponsorship for your group here. What did you have in mind as far as terms? Um, well, uh, let's call it a, uh, quickly turn in the huddle with the group real quick. Uh, do we want a line of credit or do we want a percentage? Because uh, it's very different things. Honestly, I'd be good with some, uh, getting, getting equipped, uh, with some merchandise and then, uh, blasting out the Gnome Depot uh, logo and uh, you know uh, you know uh, announcing the quality and the dependability and uh, all of the good graces of uh, of the Gnome Depot far and wide so we so we'll go a for a line of credit and pay it off through service will we have to do a jingle every single time hey if they want a jingle I will make them a jingle yeah for real nice we have a bard. All yeah, right. We're, we're looking to we're looking to secure some equipment today. Uh, All right, sure. Stern. Um, I think uh, what sounds like a totally reasonable offer here would be um, uh, a decent line of store credit that will help uh, impart upon us your fantastic items, which we can use um, in public-facing spaces to display your incredible uh, wares. Um, and then we can uh, talk about installment plans and uh, reductions, of course, due to uh, service of advertisement. Okay. Now we're, there now might we're be some cross promotion uh, available with the Risky Rabbit as well, uh, as as you may know they sponsor us, and uh, I think there would be some excellent crossover between the two markets. As you know, that is another primo sponsor. So you you talked a lot about merchandise. Which of our wares are you looking at? Um. Well, without a doubt, it should be easy to part with a few of those items. Um, I feel like a significant enough line of credit to um, display some of your most prominent items to attract some more wealthy patronage would be a good idea. And perhaps letting our friend Bronson uh, utilize this wonderful belt, for instance, uh, would uh, attract a lot of attention, particularly once we make it to the capital, which I can basically guarantee we will. Okay, so you're looking I've at... I've even, even got uh, tokens to put into the contender belt already, so... Oh, you do? How many do you have? Just one, and hopefully another by the end of today. Hmm... Okay, so the bell. Is that it? Well, um, um, the gloves would make a, a fine addition. That ring uh, would be put to good use um, in the community, especially amongst our resident healer, who is out to do good uh, for everyone uh, along our trip as well. Uh, and uh, perhaps uh, that nice musical instrument... And uh, Gator, what what did you want? I was looking at that hat. Cause okay. That could save me a spell slot every morning. I have hey. a question about the ring box, real quick. Yeah. Uh, could could you uh, when we haven't seen it demonstrated, but I'm assuming that uh, when it deploys, that Gnome Depot is featured heavily on the apron. Oh, of course, it's in the center of the ring. Well, we're. We're looking for for a number of uh, of wrestling matches going forward, and we would love to have our own facilities that we could broadcast Gnome Depot's reach far and wide. Yeah, I think we throw that into the mix, throw the whole thing down. Of course, maybe uh, you'd be willing to add, uh, um, extend us this extensive line of credit for a bit of a deposit or a holdover. You impart to us upon. Um, these wonderful items, and we will sing nothing but your praises, my good sir. So, what you're asking is for a line of credit, which you will pay back in exchange for a sponsorship? Well, I would think we'd be able to work some of it off in trade. Based exactly. on business we can throw your way. Well, how exactly. much? 
Um, uh, fair commission is probably 20%. So you want a 20% discount? No, I think uh, we want to make 20% on any sales that you make based off of our advertisement. Yeah. Well, towards uh, our credit. Uh, so that way you know you're getting something out of the deal contractually instead of just giving us for advertising alone. Out of, out of character, we want to go about 10,000 gold pieces into debt here, and we want to be able to work off of work off that that uh, that debt rather than have to be on the hook for the actual gold. Okay, so you want it on consignment, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, give me one final persuasion check. Damn it. That was the worst rolls of the night. That would be 14. Four, 14 total? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, unfortunately, that's not going to be enough to get everything you guys want. Can um, I perhaps add some intimidation into this mix? <laughs> may, may I help? I'm, I'm proficient in persuasion. Well, he already had uh, advantage, advantage with that roll. So, yeah, you, you helping doesn't really help any more than he already would have now, if you would like okay. to physically threaten him now with intimidation no, I, I, or I don't know threaten if him. threaten him but just you know bristle up and show that we can back up everything that we're saying that we're trying to get along you know that, that we're trying to, to, to persuade him nicely but that also that, that we have the strength to back up these words and it's a good investment based off of how sheer you know off the sheer strength of our of our uh I our bids well i feel like i've seen this move and i know this move from bronson before and as he starts to puff his chest and start to get a little intimidating i want to kind of like step in front and be like <laughs> all right <laughs> we've got how do people you want gnome step in front of an orc I step in front of him. I'm <laughs> this guy's size, so That's I, probably more I, I can put my whole in body in front of uh, between Bronson and this other gnome guy. So, okay. <laughs> and, and I say, we have people in the capital. I can guarantee our success. We're taking the council by storm. All right, and it's and I give him a wink, like it's more than made. He he. Submits a counter offer. Okay, you ready? Counter offer is store credit, seven thousand five hundred gold worth of items. You know you can do uh, you know shopping spree, seven thousand five hundred. Uh, on top of that, whatever other money you want to contribute uh, yeah. to buy any additional items, but he needs a favor in return. All oh, right. The sponsorship right, is great, but here's I'm the favor. Sure. So he brings Solomon in close. In, in Noma, she says, there's a competitor. And if they were to no longer be in the marketplace, it would be great for my business. If something should, it'd be a shame if something happened to their business and they were no longer allowed to compete in the seven Gym cities. Well, uh, who's the competitor? Well, it's it's another magic general item store that goes by the name the Gobby Lobby, and mm. they are a real thorn in my side. So, Gobby Lobby. All right. All right. Um, should something happen to their business, then of course that that uh, debt that you owe, you know. It, it may disappear, you know? Who, who knows what happens? I look over at Rosa, because I know she's the only one who can understand. And I give her squinty oh. eyes before I look back, and I go, I think that can absolutely be arranged. Let's just say that uh, not only are we offering an uh, incredible chance at uh, um, power and prestige on the King's Road, but uh, we have a particular set of skills. He says, great. Now, um, Roscoe has prepared a special box 
of donuts for you. Um, I was instructed to give those to you this morning and that you would have yourself a grand old party with them. Oh, why, thank you. So he... Uh, that rascal uh, is so thoughtful. He reaches behind the counter and uh, gently places a crate on the counter. Um, and he says, careful, you don't want to ruin the pastries. Mm, I, I've been down course. to Solomon, and I'm like, is this a gnomish thing too? <laughs> Um, yeah, this is, a, uh, again, a very gnomish tradition. I just peek under the lid of the crate a little bit to see the donuts. Uh, yeah, so they're bombs. You know, they're not donuts. <laughs> they're not donuts. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's feeling kind of hungry. He goes over uh, and goes, can you have one? Um, nope, these are for a, a special actual a gnomish occasion, which is unfortunately you're going to miss out on while you're climbing the mountain. Um, it's a special gnomish lunch thing. Um, we got so, snacks back at the, uh, at the Risky Rabbit, too, so. Yeah. So at, at this point, Stern says, um, so why don't you go ahead and do some shopping? I will send one of my assistants around with you to pick up a couple things. Uh, we have a couple, um, what's what's the word, constructs that work for the business that would be happy to retrieve your items and to carry them for you. Um, there are two constructs. One goes by the name of Cage, and the other goes by the name Robot Van Dam, and <laughs> they would be happy to help you uh, <laughs> gather your goods and uh, send you on your merry way. So first name, Robot? Yeah, this is Robot Van Dam. The and we got F in the store. <laughs> we got seventy five hundred in uh, in credit here. Right, seventy five hundred in store credit plus whatever other gold you want to spend. Yeah. Okay. I think we can pretty much afford everything because the belts and the ring is six thousand. Leaving a thousand left over, I have in the party purse. Yeah, I've we can get <clears throat> we can get fourteen hundred gold. We can get the ring, the gloves, the. <clears throat> can you go back to the the uh, yes. uh, flyer? Because there was one other item that I saw that I could, I can't remember off the top of my head. So, yeah, ring Board. or uh, the ring box, the glove, the liar, the belt, and the um, <clears throat> and the uh, squared circle ring uh, should all let's see that's six thousand sixty five hundred uh, seventy three hundred. Yeah, so we'd only have to put in a hundred gold to to get everything that we need. And if you want the hat, that's another six hundred. So it'd be seven hundred total, right? So six. So eighty-five hundred is what I'm coming up with for the belt, the gloves, the ring, the leer, the hat, and the ring box. Do we want that? Gator wants the hat uh, pretty bad. I could sure use an extra, like, not... I want that hat to be in like, the party, <laughs> definitely. That's very useful. I mean, it helps you grow a mustache, so how can you put so a price on that? just toss the, the vicious 2x4 on top of that as well? Just uh, have a couple of options for... I can afford it, but that'll put us down to uh, like thirty-two gold in the party. Okay, pack. let's let's not do that because we still have to also secure passage. In worst case scenario, we're gonna have no. To have we a don't. Well, no, no, no. I'm saying if everything six. goes bad, we need enough money to get our asses on a boat and be able to to, to get out of out of dodge. <clears throat> so right. I would I would think that. Yeah, let's let's hold on. Let's not get the the two by four then. So just a... uh, roll an arcana check for me. Go for it, wizards. Well, this would oh, be. I, I would like Bronson to roll for it. Oh, okay. Oh, Bronson! Yay! <laughs> Sixteen. Sixteen. So yeah. you recognize no this as a vicious weapon meaning that whatever damage you roll, you add seven damage to that in addition to your normal roll. And yeah. it qualifies as a great club. 
So it's a two-handed yeah. weapon. Yeah, it would be real good. May I ask, uh, what what we did discuss about the gun? Could we gain a bit of favor for it, or could we just? Oh it? yeah, yeah. Well, if anything, to, you know, while you're uh, while you're trading for your donuts, <laughs> we can slap that on the. Uh, on the uh, table sure. for his consideration. You can, you can oh, trade the, the gun for the vicious 2x4 just to even swap. That'd be great. Yep. Cool. Sweet. And so, my actual count on the running total, I think I typed everything in right, is 82 uh, 100 gold for the belt, the ring, the hat, the loot the ring box and the glove a decent shopping trip uh i'm coming up with 85 we'll we'll do the accounting later um but it's it's pretty close right so that's all good uh the the plan wasn't to make this uh uh, a lot of math but here we are and um you guys go ahead take those items and uh, you can divvy those out whichever way you see fit Oh, yeah. It'll take an hour to attune to any one of these items, and I will send you a message stating what the effects are of these magic weapons, or magic items. Um, it'll take a little bit of practice to get to use them, but I'll give you the full stat block on each one. So the question is, with just a few minutes left here in the episode... Where do we want to go next? Uh, we had an obligation to the church, right? Well, they only need three of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Zenth and I were going to go ahead and head up the mountain. Yeah, just give someone a big old Split slap. the party. They have to do this this alone. Yeah. Data. This is uh this is the challenge of the gym of territory seven. Yeah, even if we go with them, like they'll go into the doors without us. So yeah, I understand. No, they need to climb the mountain. Oh, the, the climbing mountain. of the mountain is... Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that's the thing. That's what they're here to do. I thought they were going to the gym by climbing the mountain. Never mind. They're in the way... Ooh, shiny yes, hat, shiny hat. But also, yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll make this easy for the group. Let's say that you all go over towards the mountain... Because you've got to wait till the next morning to do the cleansing ritual. And you get to the mountain gate. But before you enter it, you see uh, there are a couple of things that draw your attention. First, there is a sign on the wall that has a list of rules. Next, there is uh, there are a couple lock boxes that have uh, like a magical ward on them. So it's like a magical lock. Uh, so there yeah. are several of of those boxes around. They are all closed, um, but there are a couple that look like they look different from the others, meaning that they are uh, they appear to be unlocked upon closer observation. Huh. Okay, so one open. Uh, yeah, so it's it's empty on the inside and. Uh, there's an instruction in the box. It says, place your items in the box and say uh, a passphrase, and it will magically lock the box until that passphrase is repeated. Awesome. And then there is a list of rules on the gate. So we're checking our guns at the door, basically. Ooh, cool. So here are the rules, and I will read them out. Can Can everybody see these? Yep. yep. Yeah, so rules of the mountain. Rule number one. Challenges only. Rule number two, no weapons permitted on the mountain. Rule number three, stay on the road. Rule number four, do not stop on the road. Number five, continue climbing until you reach the gemstones. Number six, do not tell anyone what you've seen at the top of the mountain. And number seven, have a nice day. You know what? I will. So with this new information, you can infer that the boxes are for the weapons that aren't permitted on the mountain and that there are are at least 
some people who were already on mm-hmm. the path up the mountain. You can also infer that this is for challengers only. So there are the three of you who are not challenging cannot ascend the mountain unless you decide at this point that all of a sudden you are challengers. However, <laughs> there may be ramifications to that. Uh, no, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm I all set with the ramifications. I'm not here for mountain climbing. And this is where we're going to leave the session for tonight. So all at right. the gates of the mountain, right. everybody is fully strapped up and kitted out with all kinds of magical stuff. You've now got two sponsorships behind you. Uh, Zinthral, you are feeling fresh and clean. Yes, I am. You just you're letting the, the pores breathe a little bit here, and uh, and Snuggle Cup uh, is well, Snuggle Cup can't go up the mountain, right? So Snuggle Cup will be attending this well cleansing ceremony in the morning. So that'll be it for tonight on King's Road Young Lions. Thank you everybody for watching and listening, and Young Lions, thank you for playing. Uh, say goodbye, young lions. Bye, young lions. Bye, 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 young lions. And goodbye from Saucy. This has been uh, Kings Road, Young Lions. Thanks for coming around. Hey, congratulations. If you're still listening, that means you made it to the end of the episode. Thanks for coming by and listening to this edition of Kings Road, Young Lions. If you like what you've heard, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, leave a comment down below of what you'd like to see on the next episode. For more great content from This Is Awesome Promotions, check out the YouTube channel, check out the Twitch channel, check us out on Twitter at TIA Promotions. Thanks again for coming around, and we'll see you next time down on the King's Road.